Hey, it's Rich, and today we're going to be talking about how to remove and reinstall a headlight assembly on a 2015 to 2022 Chevy Colorado. And as you can see behind me, this is an AEV ZR2 Bison. There's a few differences between the two as far as a ZR2 and a non-ZR2 and a ZR2 versus a ZR2 Bison. In particular, you're going to be looking at a standard Colorado has a full plastic fascia. This does have a bumper. Uh, this is similar, though, to a regular ZR2, so the 2017s and up, because they do have this divided area with the plastics below and a filler panel like this. But unique to the Bison is going to be the larger fender flare. And in my case, I am running the upfitted AEV version, which does have the high marks. And because it does intrude into this panel, it does have a set of unique instructions. And we're going to go over all of that today. The first thing we're going to address is going to be under the hood here, so we'll get that popped up and you're going to see these torque spits across the top of the grill. We're going to need to get the grill moved forward, so we're going to want to remove all six of those. There's three on the driver's side, then the latch for the hood, and three more on the passenger side. We have two more here. These are going to be located at the front lower portion of the grill. You'll see both of those get removed and that'll free up that filler panel we're gonna have to take off later. For the grill, all we have to do is loosen it so we can pull the headlight housings out. We do not need to remove the entire grill as that's quite a few more steps if you really wanna go down that path. Now we just need to remove the lower flashing in the front. Uh, this on the Bison is different than it is here with the high marks. This section is slightly modified. There'll be a number of Torx bits screws in this area as well as that hold the inner fender liner to the fender flare. The bison is a little different and the high mark is even more so. Basically what you've got to do is make sure that the inner liner can be freed up so that we can get between the fender flare and the front area just below the headlight assembly so that we can take apart the bolts and brackets that hold that assembly and that filler panel in in front. So what you're going to see me do here is of course relieve all of those screws and then lightly pull that fender liner out so that I can get behind it. It does not need to come completely down. And as you can see here, going about three quarters of the way and tucking it behind the tire will give me enough access to get to the inner fender bolts so that we can remove the first two or three, as well as to provide visibility once we need to get into this pocket here. So we have the bottom, the middle, and the top seven millimeter bolt. We'll need to take all of those out. Uh, once we get those out, it's gonna free up this filler panel on this side as it connects to the fender. There is a couple more spots we have to worry about, but those will happen once we get the lower filler panel off. So with all of that cleared out of the way, we're going to want to put down some protective tape along the edge of the bumper and the filler panel. And the reason why I do this is I don't like pulling apart the entire bumper just to release this lower filler panel. So I'm basically tucking this around the inner edge, just making sure none of the sharp edges of the metal bumper score the plastics. I'm also going to use that tape to kind of wedge up the end of the grill so that I have a little bit of space to work with and more importantly to see down between the two. Here you're going to see those three screws. Uh, once those are removed, the two pins that hold it in release this side of that filler panel. There is a little bit of a groove that it tucks into on the headlight assembly that you're going to pull that out. And when we get to this very front edge, you're going to want to pay attention. There is a clip here. When you pull that edge down and towards the bumper in a rolling action, that clip should release and this is what it looks like. And it goes into the slot right here. Now you can see why we have the blue tape. This is gonna allow me to put pressure on that flexible panel and kind of work it out from the back edge where we had those three bolts along the front and basically roll this panel towards you as you're pushing on the bottom edge. This is going to vary a little bit based upon the clearance that you have on the bumper, but once you get that front edge up, it just pops out as you can see here. Now we're ready to pull off the lower grill snap. You can see just a screwdriver here releases that pop, and this will free up the grill for even more movement. On the top, we have two more seven millimeters that we're going to have to pull out in this little clip on the edge. We'll have one more seven millimeter here on the side that holds the light to the metal bracket, and one more just above where we had that quick release on the grill firmly grab and just manipulate it so that you can kind of pull the grill slightly forward and then once you clear the edge of the marker light you can see it pulls out to the edge of the vehicle. The wire harness here is a little different. This is an aftermarket headlight assembly not a factory one so it actually has a wire harness. The factory unit will actually be plugged in the back of the plastic housing versus one that's a wire. It's a little tighter and harder to deal with but the principle is the same. Pull a little safety retainer and unclip. I'm going to take a moment to digress here and talk about why I'm doing the headlight replacement and why it's backwards from obviously a stock going to an aftermarket housing. Here on the left side, you're going to see the original housing that I took off it's somewhere about two months into ownership on the vehicle. Beyond that, the assembly on the right is a product made by Lumen that is aged only about one year. 
and you can see how poorly it has uh, endured its life. Now, there hasn't been any exposure issues that have to do with misuse or abuse. Here, we're actually looking at a housing that has delamination, yellowing. It's just inferior materials and product design insofar that there was a fracture that you can't see. There's no impact on the front that separated the back of the housing from the front, which eventually caused water intrusion and dust intrusion that you see here. So you can see that that aftermarket product just didn't live up to the task at hand. With the factory assembly ready, we're going to go ahead and plug that back into the harness and we're going to be careful to put it in the same way we did. So we're going to push the inside edge of the headlight just behind where the grill is, flexing the grill, making sure that we don't catch the plastics on the edge of the light assembly here at the corner. We're going to carefully kind of rotate that in and you'll see once it clears that upper edge, it should fall into place pretty straightforward. Again, take your time, make sure you don't scratch the lenses putting it in. Uh, but for the most part, if you pay attention on the way out, it goes in the exact same way. With anything electrical and as much work as we've put into getting the assembly in there, I want to run inside, turn on the marker lights, turn on the headlights, cycle through the high beams, and make sure that the wire harness is in fact intact. We haven't damaged anything. And once I have a good systems check, I'm going to go ahead and turn everything off and get ready to complete the installation. First things first, we're going to get these upper bolts in to make sure the assembly doesn't fall off while we're doing the installation. You may have to release the snap up here to get enough space to line up the holes correctly. And then once you have those seven millimeters inserted, we'll go ahead and tighten those down. And we're gonna make sure that that clip does engage into the back of that little fender well snap. On the bottom, on the outermost part of the light assembly, we do have one screw that goes into the side of the housing. I like to push that up into its highest position before locking it in. And then I'll move to the other inside bolt, which is closest to the grill. It takes a little bit of an extension to get to. And now we're ready to put in the filler plate. The filler plate goes in in a very similar fashion as it came out. We're gonna push in the inside edge closest to the grill first. And again, making sure that tapes there, we're gonna roll it along that edge until we get everything kind of placed where it needs to be. Paying attention to this front edge, we have that clip. And as you can see, that goes closest to the slot on the grill. We wanna get that started, press that in, and as that starts to go in, we're gonna see that this upper groove is gonna snap into the bottom of the light housing. We're gonna to wanna to push that in along the front edge until we get all the way over to the edge of the fender, making sure that the filler plate is between the fender flare and is aligned with the fender itself. Once that's done, we can pull up our safety tape and we're ready to go back to doing the reassembly on the inside edge of the inner fender. Starting at the very top, I'm gonna to put the seven millimeter screw back in, then the middle and then the bottom. I wanna make sure that when I'm tightening these up that I am paying attention to the seam line on the outside. You wanna make sure that the fender and the filler panel are fairly level or flat between the two. After that's done, we're gonna go ahead and resume putting back all of the fender flare bolts. And again, these will be different for the high marks. They're bolts on the standard Bison ZR2. They're gonna be snaps. The whole point of this again, though, is just to get the fender back in place and then start tucking the inner fender liner in for the high mark or screwing back the screw holes through the inner fender well on the standard ZR2 Bison. Here on the front, again, these are unique to the Bison. These two screws uh, will be what hold in the inner fender liner. And then we have this new replacement spat that's a half spat that you can take off without removing the whole skid plate. It's kind of a nice function when adding the high mark. It's needed for extra clearance. And then we have our final three screws that hold this half spat back in place. After we have this in, we're gonna jump to the top. So let's get ready to put the grill back in. Here, I like to start the two screws on the outside and then work my way back into the middle to make sure everything lines up to the edge of the headlight assemblies. Then work your way to the bottom. We have these two screws on either side of the bottom of the grill and we're pretty much wrapped up with the headlight assembly. Take a close look around, make sure that all your lines line up. You're gonna to wanna to see how the inside edge looks to the bumper, make sure that the filler panel is in the correct spot. See how the fender joins to the filler panel, make sure that's nice and smooth, especially with the high mark, you'll definitely see if there's a step. The edge of the headlight should not hit anything. And then again, looking at this bottom edge, you'll see that that tape prevented any kind of damage to the black area. Thanks again for tuning in, and if you have any particular questions about the install, please feel free to put those in the comments or message me directly, and I will try to get you some answers to that. On top of that, if you can like and subscribe, that definitely helps me out. So thanks again for tuning in, and come back and check out the next mod for the ZR2 Bison.